This is your USMNT weekly update from March 9th to March 15th of 2021. And before we start, let's just go right to the breaking news. Yunus Musa committed to the USMNT. And man, that is some big news. That's our big W, our biggest win of the year. Regardless of what happens this year, this was one of the most important things that could have happened. I know there's much more to go on and we need to see how Yunus Musa will turn out throughout his career, but we needed to commit him this year and we did it. There's other things we need to work on, but congratulations, Greg Verhalter. I love the work you've done in regards to recruiting. With that said, this Wednesday, we have another dual national in the channel. We'll be interviewing Justin Che. So make sure you guys check out that video. We'll have an interview with Justin Che. And we also do need to get Justin Che to commit to the USMNT as he is open for the USMNT in Germany. So find out at the interview which one he's more likely to go to. Yes, we do ask him. With all that said, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and everyone that's been here for a while. And if you're new here, hit that notification bell so you don't miss our content in our live streams. We will be doing live streams for every single USMNT game this month, all of them, starting this Thursday. Guys, welcome to the channel, welcome to the series. Let's roll the episode. Okay, and let's start with the transfer updates. And there's only one to talk about. Julian Araujo has been linked to Juventus again. He has been linked before in December. And it makes sense because they were trying to sign a young right back. They tried Brian Reynolds. They lost him to Roma. So it seems like they're still in a search for one. So this rumor can very well be true. If it is to happen, it'll only be after June. So he would leave halfway through or mid MLS season. We'll see. We'll keep updating you guys on that. As of now, it's just a rumor. Let's go to the player updates and we'll start with Christian Pulisic. On Sunday, Pulisic started and played 68 minutes for Chelsea at their 0-0 draw with Leeds United. Pulisic was listed as a right winger, but had too many defensive responsibilities in my opinion. So he was looking more as a right midfielder, right wing back. The way Thomas Tuchel plays, he was likely a right wing back, in my personal opinion at least. He had a pretty good first half. He was very active and his teammates did not help much where he did create a few opportunities. He also had a pretty good run once or twice. And one of them was quite visible that Ben Chilwell just didn't send the ball in in time for Pulisic to get it in and score. But that, that's that's his teammates fault and that doesn't show up in the stat sheet and many don't talk about it. Chelsea does play midweek versus Atletico Madrid for the Champions League and Pulisic is expected to be at the bench for that game. Let's hope they go through and let's hope Christian Pulisic can get a few minutes under Thomas Tuchel. Now Weston McKinney from Juventus. On Tuesday, Weston McKinney started off the bench for Juve at their 3-2 victory loss to Porto for the Champions League. I say loss because they got knocked out with that 3-2 victory. That's the reason I said loss. McKinney came into the game at the 75th minute, played that in extra time as well. L3 fans trying to blame him once again, like they did to Des in the first leg versus Barcelona and PSG, but he didn't do that bad. He won all his air duels. He had 85% pass accuracy and he's very active in the game. Now on Sunday, McKinney started off the bench again for Juve at their 3-1 win against Cagliari for the Serie A. McKinney came into the game at the 70th minute when the match was already 3-1. So McKinney has been dealing with a hip injury. I don't know if he's fully recovered. I don't think he is. So Andrea Pirlo is likely resting him a little bit here and there. We'll likely see him start for Juve in a very near future. Now Gio Reyna. On Tuesday, Gio Reyna was not with Dortmund as the team tied Sevilla 2-2 to advance in the Champions League for the quarterfinals. And it was all due to an injury. On Saturday, Gio Reyna was back with Dortmund at their 2-0 win over Hertha Berlin. Reyna started off the bench and came in the 71st minute for Thorgan Hazard. He did not have that many minutes, but he did hit 100% of his passes out of 8, won all his ground duels, and played mostly wide rather than central. It's just good to see Gio Reyna back, and he'll probably get back to starting role very soon. He's 18, he's getting adjusted to his very first season. All right, now Serginho Des from Barcelona. On Wednesday, Des started for Barcelona as a right wing back at their 1-1 draw with PSG for the Champions League round of 16. Des had an okay game and was subbed off at the 66th minute. With that said, Barcelona is now out of the Champions League. They're not playing and I guess once again, they're knocked out early. On Monday, Serginho Des started for Barcelona at their victory over Huesca for La Liga. He played 69 minutes as he was subbed off when they had a 3-1 lead. And they were also resting other Barcelona players such as De Jong and Griezmann at the time as the victory was almost locked in. So Gino Das had an okay performance as a right wing back. He continues to get minutes and start as a right wing back, which is the position he's best at. But I would like to see him a little more as a full back so he can deal with his defending issues a little more and improve it. But that's all I have on Dest. Now Tyler Adams from RB Leipzig. On Wednesday, RB Leipzig was defeated by Liverpool two goals to nothing at the Champions League round of 16. 
Ty Adams played a full 90 minutes as a right wing back, and Leipzig are also out of the Champions League early. Now, Sunday, Ty Adams stayed most of the game at the bench for Leipzig at their 1 1 draw with Eintracht Frankfurt. Adams came in the 86th minute. It's been a while since he was benching Leipzig, so it was a surprise to me, but maybe he was just getting some rest. He is pretty much a lock and start at this point as either a right wing back or a holding midfielder, and sometimes even as a box to box, but mostly holding midfielder and right wing back. So now let's go by position. I'll start with the goalkeepers. All right, so our goalkeepers abroad are not playing or they're either in the reserve squad or youth squads, but there's one goalkeeper that has been playing. That's Josh Cohen from Maccabi Haifa. And this weekend, Maccabi Haifa defeated Yehunda 2-0 and he got a clean sheet. So I had a report on that. We'll report on Josh Cohen more often as he is a goalkeeper that's playing abroad. So let's move on to the next position. And we're going with the center backs and we'll start with John Brooks, our best center back right now. On Saturday, Wolfsburg defeated Schalke 5-0 for the Bundesliga. John Brooks started and played a full 90 minutes. He was not highly tested throughout the game, but another solid performance from Mr. Consistent this season, Mr. John Brooks. All right, now let's go a little bit younger now and we're gonna go with Chris Richards from Hoffenheim. On Sunday, Chris Richards played a full 90 minutes for Hoffenheim after 2-0 loss to Stuttgart. Richards did not have the best game, in my personal opinion. I even think he failed in the first goal by not being well positioned as the goal did originate from his side of the defense, the left side, as he has been playing as a left center back on a three defender formation. Materazzo, the American manager for Stuttgart, continues to impress. His team was impressive using the 4-3-2-1 formation which honestly, he should be a candidate for the USMNT as he has been somewhat impressive with Stuttgart the past two seasons. His contract does expire in 2024. I do like the way Stuttgart plays and it could work with the USMNT, but we won't see him in the near future. He does have a high release clause and his contract doesn't expire until 2024. So we're gonna stick with Bearhalter. All right, now Eric Palmer Brown. On Sunday, Palmer Brown started and played a full 90 minutes for Austria Wien at their 2-1 loss to Sturm Graz. All right, now Matt Miazga and Mark McKenzie because they play in the same game. On Sunday, Miazga started and played a full 90 minutes for Underlash at their 2-1 loss to Genk. Well, Miazga played a big role, unfortunately, for the worst. He scored an own goal at the 59th minute that pretty much got them the loss to Genk. Mark McKenzie was active for the same game as well, but he started off the bench for Genk. McKenzie came in the 73rd minute as Lukimi, Genk's center back, got a red card. Therefore, Mark McKenzie is expected to start next game as their starting center back got a red card and will serve suspension. I am very upset that Mark McKenzie is not a lock and starter, but maybe getting the minutes now and starting the next game can get him some confidence and start to get more meaningful minutes for Genk at the Belgium League. All right, now Kick Piri from Twenty FC. On Saturday, Kick started and played a full 90 minutes for Twenty at their unfortunate 4-1 loss to AZ Alkmaar. All right, now Cameron Carter Vickers from Burnmouth. On Saturday, Carter Vickers started and played a full 90 minutes for Burnmouth at their 3-2 loss to Barnsley, where he played versus Daryl DK. However, I'll get to Daryl DK later in the video. I'm not going to talk about him right now. We'll talk about him at his section when we get to the forwards. Now let's move to the fullback position. We'll start with Anthony Robinson from Fulham. On Saturday, Robinson started off at the bench at, for Fulham at their 3-0 loss to Manchester City. Again, Scott Parker went up for four defender formation and due to Robinson's bad defense, he started off the bench and he came in the 80th minute. It's becoming quite common when Scott Parker wants more of a defensive left back, he does not use Robinson. It's what we've been saying here in the channel and it's been happening quite often at Fulham. All right, now Reggie Cannon from Boa Vista at Liga NOS. On Saturday, Reggie Cannon started and played a full 90 minutes for Boa Vista at their 2-0 loss to Benfica. He has been linked to Benfica a few times this season, so it's pretty good to see him play against them. He had an okay game, hopefully enough to impress them and get them to sign him as I do want him to make a big move this summer and I'm hopeful it'll happen. Not necessarily Benfica, but any bigger team than Boa Vista. All right, now Brian Reynolds from Roma. On Thursday, Roma defeated Shakhtar Donetsk 3-0 in the Europa League. Brian Reynolds was not with the roster as he's not registered for the Europa League squad. But this shows that the Roma squad is pretty strong based off the result. Now on Sunday, Reynolds started off at the bench for Roma at their 2-0 loss to Parma for the Serie A. He came in the final 30 minutes and had not such a great debut, but he did fine. He's very young and it's very nice to get him involved very early with this team. What matters here is Brian Reynolds got minutes, had his debut from Roma, and hopefully he can pick it up from there. I expect the big things from him next season, not this season. This season, we just want him to start getting involved. That's good enough for me. Congratulations, Brian Reynolds, for getting a debut at the Serie A at Roma. Very big Italian team. All right, now Yedlin from Galatasaray. On Saturday, Yedlin started and played a full 90 minutes for Galatasaray at their 3-0 win over Kayas Sispor for the Turkish League. And... Don't go at me with that name. I don't know how to say these Turkish names. Maybe I got Galatasaray right, but not the other ones. Let's move on with the video. 
Now we're going to go to the midfielders, and we're going to start with Yunus Musa right away. Player that just committed with the USMNT and gave England another big L. On Friday, Yunus Musa started off at the bench for Valencia for their 1-0 loss to Levante at La Liga. He came in the 85th minute of the game. Now, if you want to learn more about Yunus Musa now that he committed to the USMNT, you might want to check our video, our player bio on him. I will put the link on the description. You'll learn more about his flaws, his qualities, his background, where he came from, his bio, everything. So that video is perfect for that. Thank you, Yunus Musa, for joining the USMNT. Looking forward to having you with us. All right, now Johnny Cardoso, the Brazilian American from Internacional. Johnny Cardoso played a full 90 minutes for Internacional last Monday as a holding midfielder at their 2 1 loss to San Luis at the state tournament of Rio Grande do Sul in Brazil. On Sunday, he was not with Inter's roster as he had headed for the Olympic qualifier camp, which the first game will be this Thursday and will do a live stream. Johnny Cardoso is expected to start for the USMNT as a box to box midfielder. All right, now Brandon Arison from RB Salzburg. On Saturday, Brandon started and played a full 90 minutes for RB Salzburg as a left midfielder at their 3-1 win over Admira. Brandon did not have the best game, but the American continues to get consistent minutes and I like what I'm seeing. Okay, now Luca De La Torre from Heracles at the Dutch League. On Saturday, De La Torre started for Heracles at their 2-1 win over Den Haag. He was subbed off at the 90th minute. So De La Torre pretty much played a full match again. He has been pretty good for the Heracles and he has been asking to get called up for the USMNT. I don't think there's space for him right now, but we should keep an eye on him. But who knows? I don't know if the March camp is out already by the time you're watching this. Maybe he got called up. All right, now Dwayne Holmes. On Saturday, Holmes started off at the bench for Huddersfield at their 1-0 win over QPR. Holmes came into the game at the 52nd minute when the game was still 0-0. All right, we reached the forward positions and let's start with Timothy Weah. On Sunday, Tim Weah started for Lille at their 0-0 draw with Monaco for the French League. Weah was subbed off at the 69th minute of the match. As much as I want Lille to win the French League because, well, I don't like PSG and I want Tim Weah to win the French League, an American, the title's likely going to go to PSG, just being realistic. And yes, I know PSG dropped some points again this weekend in a ridiculous way. But I think they're going to win when it comes to the end of the season. They're going to make a push. I don't think Lille has been very consistent lately also as well. I, I just think PSG is going to win it. But let's keep hoping Tim Weah does win the French League. I'm just trying to be realistic. All right, now Matthew Hoppe from Schalke. On Saturday, Matthew Hoppe started off at the bench for Schalke at their 5-0 loss to Wolfsburg. Hoppe came in the 72nd minute when the game was already 4-0. The Schalke team is pretty much relegated at this point and their defense is worse than many if not all MLS teams at this point. They allow 66 goals in 25 games, only won one game out of 25 and you know the only game they won was the Matthew Hoppy hat trick game. So this team is just terrible, it's not a Bundesliga team at all, they shouldn't even be there and that's why they're going to get relegated. All right now Alex Mithigan, another dual national that hopefully we can recruit him as well as we recruited Yunus Musa. On Saturday, Mithigan studied a full 90 minutes for Nottingham Forest at their 1-1 draw with Reading. Now, Lyndon Goosh from Sunderland. On Sunday, Goosh started and played a full 90 minutes for Sunderland at their 1-0 win over Tranmere for the Football League Trophy Final at Wembley. For the first time since 1973, Sunderland got a win at Wembley and an American scored the lonely goal. It's nice to see an American get a trophy as well as play for Sunderland. Even though Sunderland is not as good as when Claudio Reyna played there, it's very fun to see that happen. That's why we haven't been reporting at him, but big news came out. Congratulations to Goosh. Goosh also has three goals and seven assists in 29 games played this season. All right. Now, our boy, Daryl DK from Barnsley, former Orlando City. On Wednesday, Daryl DK started and played a full 90 minutes for Barnsley as a center forward at their 0-0 drop of Derby County. It was a boring game to say the least. Now on Saturday, Daryl DK started off the bench for Barnsley at a 3-2 victory over Burnmouth, where they faced Cameron Carter Vickers, his fellow American. DK came in the game in the 67th minute and had an okay match, very physical match. There were also reports in the UK this week that Orlando City rejected a $10 million offer for Daryl DK, as they have put a transfer fleet clause of $20 million on him, I'm assuming that's the minimum they want, so there's no surprise there. And from that price tag, I do expect Daryl DK to head either to a bigger league or back to the MLS. I don't think Barnsley will pay the 20 million. I don't even think a Premier League would work for him right now. So Daryl DK will likely come back to the MLS unless Orlando City accepts less than 20 million. Now Josh Sargent from Werder Bremen. On Wednesday, Josh Sargent started for Werder at their 2-0 win over Armenia. Sargent scored the first goal of the game and was subbed off at the 64th minute. On Saturday, Sargent started again and played a full 90 minutes for Werder at their 3-1 loss to Bayern Munich. 
He was the highest rated Werder player, had a solid game despite his team not helping too much. He completed 83% of his passes, showed great holdup game, and had one key pass and one big chance created. All right, so Sargent had a pretty good performance to Bayern, I'm going to be honest, even though he didn't score or get an assist. And it's also facing Bayern. Werder Bremen is not that good. And facing a dominant team like Bayern, I expected them to do very bad. But Sargent did not do bad. He played very well once again. All right, now Theoson Siabasho, that he also committed to the USMNT. It's not as big as Yunus Musa, but I also think it's important to get more players for our poll, and we got Theoson Siabasho as well. On Thursday, Siabasho started off at the bench for Young Boys after 3 0 loss to Ajax for the Europa League. Siabasho came in the 84th minute. On Sunday, Siabasho started off the bench again for Young Boys after 2 2 draw with Galen. He came in the 62nd minute and had an assist in the game, tying the game for Young Boys at the 82nd minute. So as I said, he's committed to the USMNT. I don't expect him to be a starter. I don't even expect him to be with us long term. I don't expect us to call us as I do expect our young guys such as Sargent, Hoppy, Daryl DK, and a couple others that can show up like Sebastian Soto to take over that position. And as Seba shows already turning 25, he failed at League One, and now he's only doing okay at the Swiss League. He's not a lock-in starter for young boys. Those are the reasons I don't have high expectations on him. But I think he could be a good bench player, but I'm not very... I'm not overly hyped on him as I am for Yunus Musa or many other dual nationals, such as Kik Piri as well. These guys, I don't look very highly on Theosan Siabasho. All right, now Tyler Boyd. On Saturdays, Tyler Boyd started for Sivaspor at the Turkish League during their 1-0 victory over Kara Gumruk. I don't know if I said that properly. He pretty much played a full 90 minutes as he was only subbed off at the 93rd minute. I personally don't rate him very highly, but I could see him getting called up for the USMT, especially because we don't have Morris right now, for example. They got injured. I could see Greg Berhalter calling him up. I don't know if the March camp is out already at the time of this recording. It's not. So we could even see him at the March camp or future USMT calls up. I think that's very possible. Hopefully not in the long term, though. All right, now Haji Wright. On Thursday, Haji Wright started for Sonja Jeski at their 4-1 win over Fremont for the Danish Cup quarterfinals. Wright scored their first goal and was subbed off at the 73rd minute. On Sunday, Haji Wright started and played a full 90 minutes at their 2-0 win over Horsens. Sander Jeski currently sits at 6th place at the Danish League. Alright, now Emmanuel Sabi. On Sunday, Sabi started off at the bench for Odezi at their 3-0 loss to Brondi. He came into the game at the final 15 minutes and had a very below average performance. Now I'm going to give a list of players that we normally cover, but they were either inactive or didn't have much of a good performance this week and worth talking about. Zach Steffen, Ethan Horvath, CJ Dos Santos, Odunze, Matthew Olasunde, Joe Scali, Owen Otasawi, Julian Green, Shaquille Moore, Henry Wingo, Chris Durkin, Florin Balagun, Sebastian Soto, which is with the Olympic qualifier roster, Nico Joachini, Yuli Yanez, that's also of the Olympic qualifier roster, and Paul Ariola that hasn't been playing for Swansea, which to me, it was always expected. I never thought he was very good. He's just an MLS player. Not much better than that. So guys, I want to thank you all very much for watching. If you made it this far, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell. And we'll see you at the USMNT live streams that we'll be doing all month long. All the games, all five to seven games that the USMNT could play for the Olympic qualifiers in the March camp. All right? Don't forget to comment your player of the week. I want to thank you all very much for watching. Hopefully you also enjoyed this beautiful New York Cosmos jersey. Thank you for watching, guys. Have a great day.